Welcome home, my fellow heroes. We've got an important item on the docket today. See, our dear Nintendo has withheld lifelong friends from visiting our island paradises. Sure, some of you youngins might not remember the likes of Brewster and Harriet, but I remember. I remember. For those of you living under a rock, Nintendo has been on a rampage, replacing characterization for efficiency at every possible corner. Staples of Animal Crossing's past have been exchanged for magic mirrors and DIY kiosks. The latest victim in their virtual massacre came in the form of Katrina, the former fortune teller who could alter fate with one look to the skies. Our surprisingly sparse anniversary update revealed that she had been relegated to nothing more than a phone application on par with The Compass and every dieting app you've downloaded once and never looked at again. In lieu of Nintendo's negligence, I have taken up the mantle of incorporating these outcast characters into our islands and reinventing the means of their intervention therein. Do I think Nintendo will listen to these ideas and undo every undo decision? No. Not a shot. Consider this the uh, fix-it fic of gaming. A wish list, not a prediction. And speaking of predictions, it seems Katrina divined a little something just for us. Were Katrina included in New Horizons, the question on everyone's minds would, of course, be, well, what would she do? In prior iterations, our nomadic medium would set up shop within city limits and pawn off predictions about your character's daily luck for a quick buck. The concept was simple, albeit underdeveloped, but it laid a foundation for us to build upon. How, you ask? Why, through the luck mechanic, of course, and it came in so very many forms. See, back in the good old days of population growing, Katrina came to town every New Year's and distributed fourfold fortunes. These letters would influence the character's general, relational, financial, and physical luck. Yet these divergences in serendipity didn't stick around. So why don't we dust them off and polish them with a newfound purpose in a paradise far, far away? For our redefined feature, Katrina will come to town much the same as in previous incarnations, but her powers have expanded into six separate domains. Luck, love, wealth, weather, health, and strength. Yes, I realized I ruined the ending alliteration. Yes, it is still haunting me. No, I do not want to talk about it. General luck will alter the rarity of bugs and fish caught, the types of mystery islands available, and the price range of goods in Nook's Cranny. Love affects the friendship points earned with neighbors, regardless of gender, the rarity of items received from them via mail or favors, and the frequency by which random events with villagers occur. Wealth affects what one pays for any product in Nook's Cranny, how much money neighbors will send or offer you, and the value of golden spots. Weather can change, you guessed it, the weather, wow, didn't see that one coming. Health determines the efficacy of ingested fruit, the frequency of tripping, and if even the character themselves needs a dose of medicine in the morning, or can fend off bee stings no problem. Strength has one primary function, affecting how long tools can endure a beating before breaking. Once you figure out what type of fortune strikes your fancy, it's time to determine how long that enchantment will take place. One day, three days, or seven days. So what's the catch? Well, there's no knowing what the stars will say before you decide the length of their stay. Higher gambles require heftier payments. And that, dear audience, is where you come in. You see, the means of compensation could add a layer of intricacy to this mechanic, or cause it to malfunction entirely. The basis of this function should undoubtedly be that each extension of the effect's duration should require the player to shell out more bells. For example, a one-day enchantment could cost 100 bells, no biggie. A three-day spell would be, say, a thousand. And the deluxe package? Well, that week-long incantation will cost you a whopping 10,000 bells. That system's easy, simple, predictable even. So what if we shook it up? See, putting an extra coin in Katrina's purse could encourage her to channel additional star power into town. The more money donated, the more likely a positive fortune becomes. 
this would never ensure a favorable outcome, as that would, by definition, no longer be luck. Perhaps the odds could, however, tip from 50-50 in either direction to, say, 75-25 in your favor? But I'm not sold on this idea either way. For one, the ability to influence one's non-turnip-related affluence could lead to a balancing nightmare. On the other, cultures associated with Katrina's profession have some long-standing stereotypes connected to conning people out of money, and I would rather honor other races than reinforce prejudices. So I want to hear from you. Should the stars be held to the whims of wealth, should Katrina stick to flat fees, or can the mechanic otherwise be innovated? Whatever the case, keep in mind that we can always repurpose this function elsewhere with other characters. After collecting your payment, Katrina will deliver divine judgment upon ye, with increasing degrees of success. Visualize a scale. No, no, the other scale. No, a scale. Ugh, the English language sucks. A linear scale. There we go, thank you. Okay, uh, the first notch would be the worst outcome, and the highest notch would be the best outcome. At the center is neutral luck, a rare occurrence when Katrina says that the stars have decided to ignore you entirely. Congratulations, you're the first person the heavens have ever left on red. Whatever your outcome, the effect will last for the predetermined period of time, and Katrina can no longer repeat her services until her next visit. Her tent will, however, be available all day long until 5 a.m., because why would a woman who uses star power close her shop when the stars are out? But maybe you don't want to leave your future up to chance. Maybe you want to work for your favor. Don't worry, old Katrina's got you covered. Instead of selecting a fortune, ask Katrina for a lucky charm. You know what? I'm not even going to bother fixing that one. Requesting a lucky charm will take out the randomized factor of a fortune and provide the player with a task to complete instead. The same categories and timeframes apply as the aforementioned fortunes. The longer the time frame, the harder the task. Unlike in City Folk, these do not all require you to connect with friends due to the paid nature of Nintendo Online Services. However, having friends help you will most likely aid in your overall success. Completing the task before Katrina leaves will end in her casting the enchantment over the island. That about sums up her services, but what of her rewards? Personally, I prefer when special villagers gift the player with presents and prizes dependent upon their interests and interactions, much in the same way your normal villagers might provide a framed picture of themselves. Katrina in particular has three pieces of furniture she would gladly let you get your paws on once she has divined the right time has come. The first of which, Katrina's picture, is gifted to the player for their continued patronage after 50 readings. Because the special villagers deserve photographs of their own, too! The second reward, the crystal ball, is gifted to the player once the island's enchantment time exceeds 50 days. This is a furniture item that recreates a miniature version of Katrina's magic in the comfort of the player's home. The third and final reward, a modified version of New Leaf's lovely phone, now redesigned to fit a constellation theme and renamed the Lucky Phone, will be gifted to the player after fulfilling the requirements for 20 Lucky Charms. This will allow you to learn of your lucky item every day, increasing your generalized luck even when Katrina is not present. With all of that said, my well of inspiration has run dry. But this isn't a singular effort. I want to know how you would incorporate Katrina, if you could. And don't forget to give me your two cents on the money debacle either. Thank you so much for chilling out here at the homestead with me. Be sure to become a hero by subscribing and join the party as we continue this and many other series soon to come. If you'd like to catch me trampling across my own island, be sure to keep an eye on twitch.tv slash homestead hero. But until then, May good fortune follow your every footstep, or paw step, and remember that bad times are just times that are bad.